Well, it's May, and I hate to sound like it's going to be a broken record from April, but I've got the stats up for May. I think you're all going to be excited to see that um, nothing much has changed other than prices in Calgary have continued to go up. And you can see uh, starting out with uh, showing you the eight different quadrants of the city. And by the way, this does include condos. So this is the benchmark price for each area. And you can see where we're at up in the north, 573, 500, 657, 700, you know, 522. Look at the north. They're all up. I mean, the northeast, 16.2% year over year. Just incredible, actually, to see that. In the west, we're up 9.7%. And some of you might say, well, why is that one not as high as the northeast, for example? Don't forget the lower end prices is the highest demand. So when you get to the West, we have higher prices. So there's just not as many buyers that can push those prices up. So we've got a lot of pressure right now on properties that are especially under $600,000. And that's exactly why even in the city center here, you can see we're only at 4% year over year because we have a lot of expensive properties in the city center. And then you can see exactly what I'm saying in the east are up 22.8% because our benchmark price is 441. So very affordable. Down in the south, same as the north, we're at 594,900. It's up 11.6%. In the southeast, we're at 592,700. 10.2% is the increase. All right, so let's just do a little deeper dive now into what we've seen in the month of April. Okay, here are some of the hard numbers that you can see. April 2024, our total sales were 2,881. So that is up 7.26% from April of 23, which uh, interestingly enough, we did that with 2,711 properties for sale. So we're actually down from 3,234, so 16% less listings and 7.26% more sales, which is a big reason why, you know, supply versus demand, we're seeing some price increases. And, you know, this is, this is the broken record story. And you can see we're still under one month worth of inventory. So in other words, if, we, if no new listings came on the market at all, it would take less than a month to sell out of all of our inventory in Calgary. So uh, these are just the, this is the continuation of what we saw in, uh, in March as well. And that's why you can see sales to list price uh, were at 101.89%. So, you know, on average, um, most of the properties sold at or above the asking price. I want to make it clear though, not every property is selling at or above. Remember, these are just averages, okay? Now, there's our benchmark price. This takes into account all product, including apartment condo, as well as detached properties. And look at the increase. We went from 549,200. That was, uh, that was for the, for April of 2023 and for the month of April, we're up to 603,700, so a 9.92% increase. And if we look at our year to date, this is just, this is just again for the month of April, but if we go over here year to date, we're at 589,575, and that's up 10.26% for the whole year. And then if we look at the median price, uh, which really just takes into account the number of homes sold in the more expensive market, the luxury market, into taking into account the numbers of, of properties that sold below the benchmark price. You know, we're coming in at 565 for the month. And then if you take the average price, it's coming in at 608. So the benchmark price and the average are pretty close together. And this chart, again, I showed this last month, same story. The blue is showing just where the inventory is. And you can see this is not normal. Uh, in May, this is typically a month that a lot of sellers put their properties on the market because people like to move when the weather's warm. So you can see we typically see inventories start to rise in the spring, but right now we're seeing such low inventory, we're just not getting enough put on the market and, and it is um, getting snapped up pretty quick. 
So it, the story really hasn't changed, but I've got another chart here I'm going to show you. Now, some of you that are watching this video, you might really be a stats person. Some of you maybe not so much, but stats are really for everybody. And I want you to know something. When I represent clients, I do look at a lot of data primarily because I like to really give people some good, solid advice because we all know that real estate, we, we buy real estate if it's our own personal home, we buy it for the enjoyment and for the peace of mind that we're going to you know make memories there but we always have a financial component to our decision we always look at you know what is the return on investment am i buying a property that might be easy to sell in the future what would be the expected rate of return i could be looking at i like to look at all of that data so that people do understand what they're getting and this is a this is a new chart that i'm now looking at that i have access to not everybody has access to this you have to pay more money for it but this just shows in the last month how many two stories you can see we do have a lot of two stories in calgary and i can break this down to every community as well we even can look at the highest turnover streets in every community so we can really get down into the minutia of every community to establish which community would have the the best rate of return and what is the most popular product but you can see for calgary by and large people like two stories so you really can't go wrong with two stories. We don't have enough bungalows. I actually think there would be a lot more sales of bungalows if we had more inventory, but we, we just don't have enough inventory for bungalows. But I do know that's a pretty high demand. But you can see our average sale in the last month was 758000 for a two-story and 697 for a bungalow, 329000 for an apartment. So a strong market. And then, of course, it goes all the way down to all kinds of other different products as well. But again, these charts have you understand more the supply and demand based on the type of product that you might be interested in. And that's good information to have because sometimes people look at a property and it might have a bit of an odd floor plan or something unique about it. And you as an individual might think to yourself, you know, I really like this property. I think it works for me. I kind of like the uniqueness of it. But when you go to sell it again, sometimes that can be very costly because the masses don't like that particular kind of property. And it's something you should be aware of if you make a decision like that. Okay, getting into the, uh, the charts again here, showing the absorption rate. This is apartment condominium, same story, 86.44% of the condos that were listed in the month of April sold. So uh, very, you know, high demand, but actually not quite as high as March. So. A little bit of softening there to me that would be not a bad thing to see a little bit of softening and you can see for year over year we're up 17.72 percent in condominium with a benchmark price now of 346,200. so that's a really strong market this just tells you where we came from you can see all those years that we were going down and now you can just see the strength of where we're headed going up. and obviously it's not a surprise that we're seeing those kind of gains because it's affordable if you take the higher interest rates and the lower prices of condominium and especially when you factor in we're still relatively cheap compared to big markets like toronto and vancouver so 822 sold out of the 951 that got listed so i'm very strong 23 days on the market on average I love looking at the market distribution because it shows me the price points of condominium and you can see 40 almost 41 percent are selling between three and four hundred thousand dollars now and and you know this if you've been following my videos last year it uh, it was two to three hundred thousand dollars was at the 40 percent so you can see how this market is shifting now you're going to start to see the two to three hundred start to drop just like the less than you know 199,000 is going by the way of the dinosaur and you'll start to see this 400 to 500,000 price point start to creep up but you can also see we still don't have a big market for condominium that exceeds $500,000 and I think that's something you should really consider in your decision making if you're looking at the market and of course row houses continue to uh, just I mean, I can't even make sense of these charts at 142% um, absorption rate. I mean, it's just anything that's coming on the market in a, in a townhouse. Well, almost anything. I can't say absolutely everything, but because I've got a couple of townhouses right now that we had sold and then they fell apart with financing. But look at the price increases. I mean, we've gone up 20% and we're now hitting 458,100. I mean, with with this kind of a demand, 
you know, it's it's hard to say that that prices are are going to have any type of slowdown anytime soon. That's for sure. And it's really kind of hard to believe when you look at in 2015 we're at 323, you know, and now year to date we're at 442. So we've seen such a strong increase there. But again, it goes back to the affordability of it. You know, that's that's just a market that a lot of people can afford to buy real estate in. So you can really see, you know, we. All of the listings that came on the market, that's why you're seeing more sold than, than were active. This is what was active at the end of the month. But you can see we had more sales than that because there was just, you know, anything that came on the market was just selling. And you can see here in market distribution, you know, now we're at almost 40% between four hundred dollars and $500,000. So that is the sweet spot. And it's so interesting every time I look at this chart, how, you know, three to 400 was the apartment condos, four to 500 is the um is the row houses and now you'll see as we move into semi-detached that that goes into the next phase but you can see i think uh, you know if this if this continues the way it's going some of these townhouses are going to push the prices up to maybe where this five to six hundred thousand range could end up being about the same percentage of the market as the four to five hundred i mean that's really where we're headed if this low inventory market continues now none of us ever know what's going to happen i know Sometimes when you see a market like this, people think that it's just going to keep going up and up forever. But trust me, they generally don't. Um, usually at some point we see a leveling off. I think there, I believe there'll be a point where the, the buyers will, will finally say, hey, you know what? These, these prices have been pushed so hard that it's going to, the market's going to take a little bit of a breather. But it's really hard to know when that will happen. I, I can't predict that. So here we get into the semi-detached market. These are... 122% uh, absorption rate, so really strong market, 668,400. So this is, when I say semi-detached, these are attached properties. Uh, don't have, they don't have condo fees, so they're you know, pretty much, what well, we, we classify them as a single family dwelling. And uh, you can see year to date, we're at 647,000. 668 was just for the month of April. So uh, that's up 12.91% year over year. Boy, that's a strong market. 255 out of 208. So similar to the row houses. If we come down here, you can see um, there's a little bit a bigger distribution here and primarily because we have a lot of inner city properties that are also attached. But uh, right away, you can you can spot it 500 to 600,000. That's 24% of the market. So, you know, for those that are able to uh, get into this price point, you can get into, uh, you know, a single family dwelling without condo fees. And you know, I noticed that a lot of the newer developments around Calgary, there's a lot of them that have this product that's available. And I, and I can tell you, we have had some pretty good strategies of sending out mailers to, uh, to sellers that, that have responded to our mailers. So if you are a buyer looking in this market and you want to get some information and strategy and maybe how to find some properties off the market, you should definitely reach out to us. And secondly, if you are a seller, and you're thinking of selling your property, I've, I've actually successfully put a, a property together recently that we had, because we have so many buyers in our database right now, like we're, it's incredible how many buyers. I've, I've, I've got actually over 1,500 buyers right now that are in my CRM that are actively looking at homes. So if, if you've got something that you're thinking of selling and uh, we might be able to put something together for you, that's the kind of market that we're in. Now, anyway, getting back to the distribution, six to six to seven hundred in this market here, you can see that is climbing. And over here, when you get into eight to nine hundred, that's definitely a lot of the infills. And uh, and I'm and I'm really surprised by this too. Eight point nine percent of the market, so seventy four has have sold even a million to a million five. So uh, this inner city market, which is really probably starts at about seven hundred, although most of them start at eight. But you can see that's a pretty big part of the market that we're seeing here. And people are very comfortable with this product. I know I, I live in Altador and I see how many of these have gone up and over the years, how many I've sold and showed in this in this market. It's, it's pretty impressive. But I will say this, you have to be very, very careful when you're dealing in new construction in the inner city. There are some very unqualified builders in that market. And um, you really need to know what you're doing and you need, need to know how to protect yourself. So if you've got questions around that, reach out to me, send me a text, send me an email. If you have questions around that, I give the information up for free. But my, let my experience come into play when it comes to that, because I can definitely give you a lot of guidance around that. 
So there you go. That just wraps up what everything looked like for the month of April. I have a feeling that May is going to look rather similar as well. And uh, like I always say in these videos, if you do have questions or you are thinking of going on the market, I have some great strategies over the years and especially in a market environment like we're in right now. This is the third seller's market that I've worked in in my career. So I definitely have learned a thing or two and I can give people some good advice. So hopefully this has been helpful and I will look forward to doing the next video come June.